Welcome to our webinar training today on Ladder Logic and Touchscreen PLC programming. Ladder Logic is widely used for control functions, is a programming language based on Boolean expressions, and is represented by graphical relay logic diagrams. Our touchscreen controllers can be programmed in both C language and Ladder Logic, come with free HMI Works development environment and demo programs. Later in the training, we'll demonstrate how to use function blocks buttons, and timers to configure touchscreen controllers. If you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the chat box. I'm Maria Lamoni, Sales Manager here at icp USA, and have Robert Morrell from our Technical Support Department with me. We provide free technical support, demo programs, and software utilities. We provide free programming services for small and large projects. Our products are used worldwide, and are designed with and manufactured by our team in Taiwan. Ladder Logic is a programming language that's represented by graphical diagrams based on schematics of relay logic hardware. Conditions on the left lead to outputs on the right. Logic functions are implemented by developing a ladder diagram that consists of horizontal rungs that get executed sequentially. Ladder Logic literally looks like a ladder and is used to implement logic, which is how it got its name. There are different types of variables that can be used with ladder logic. Digital inputs are Boolean variables, which are on or off, like a light, which can be re represented by one if true or zero if false. Analog values can be represented by an integer or real number. Attributes are related to the different types of variables. And variables can be either local to a program or global to the whole application. And they often map up with IO. Message variables are strings. ASCII is the American Standard Code for Information Exchange, which is a character encoding scheme of computers, controllers, and communication devices that are used to re represent numbers. This table here shows you how characters from your keyboard map up to numbers that get input into the computer when you press a button. The computer doesn't see the letter A when you press it. Instead, it sees dollar sign $41. You can convert strings to numbers with functions. There are different types of contacts. Some are normally open and some are normally closed. Ladder logic gets implemented sequentially so you use normally open contacts and normally closed contacts in your program according to your application scenarios. If a light switch is normally off, you could use the inverted contact to represent that scenario in your program. Two normally open contacts in parallel implement an OR function. Normally open contacts in series implement an AND function. So if each contact was a light switch, both would need to be in the ON situation for the output coil or light to turn on. As you can see in the truth table, the light can only turn on if both inputs are true. In the OR situation, if two light switches, if they're in parallel, either one of the light switches would need to be on for the output to turn on. You can control the flow of your program with jump, label, and return. You can have the program go back to the start of the program if the condition is true at the return statement, or you can insert a jump to make the program go to a particular area in the ladder program. Function blocks help with development since they have logic built in, so you can just insert them into your ladder diagram, and they'll implement operations like timer functions and arithmetic operations. Our touchscreen PLCs combine an HMI and a controller all in one. They can run one program that can be developed in ladder logic and C language and support many frames. They come in 2.8, 3.5, 4.3, and 7-inch versions. PoE options are available, so they can be powered with a power over Ethernet switch or PoE injector. HMI Works free development environment is included with our touchpads for creating applications with the graphical user interface. They support Modbus RTU over RS-485 and Modbus TCP over Ethernet options. Models with both Ethernet and RS-485 support both Modbus RTU and Modbus TCP. Our rugged touchscreen PLCs have a resistive display, so they can be used while wearing gloves and are available in different brightnesses and intensities. 
Our VPD series, touchscreen PLCs, are IP65, so if mounted properly in a panel, they can be sprayed at with water jets. They also have optional rubber keypads. Our rugged touchscreen controllers recently came out with some new metal face plates. The ones with metal face plates have a 2.8 inch color touchscreen, support a wide range of operating temperatures, and can communicate either over Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP. There's also PoE versions, so you won't need a power supply. They can be powered by power over Ethernet switches, PoE injectors, or power over Ethernet routers. We also carry 4.3 and 7.0 inch touchscreen controllers. They can communicate over a various Modbus RTU and Modbus TCP protocols and have different memory limitations and brightness levels based on your application. You can use them with external Modbus devices like Modbus TCP Remote I.O. and Modbus RTU Remote I.O. There are different mounting options available. The gray VPD series can be mounted on a DIN rail and the TPD series can be mounted in a wall or an external wall mount box. They support a drag and drop type of development environment with HMI work software. This is the development environment software. There's many different objects and widgets available for use like shapes, text, pictures, timers, sliders. There's also different libraries available. As you can see on the left, there's a workspace and toolbox. This is where you can actually map up your actual I.O. devices for using them in your program. The frame design space is what your actual screens on your touchpad will look like. On the right, you can see there's an inspector and libraries. Uh, basically, the, you'll be able to change the things like the color and map them up to buttons and I.O. At the bottom, you can see there's a results window for debugging. This is what the ladder logic interface looks like with the HMI development software. Robert's going to show you this a little bit later in the training. If you have any questions, please enter them into the chat box, and I'm going to switch the webinar over to Robert right now. Okay, thank you, Maria. Okay, uh, let's see. This is our HMI Works software, which is used with our TPD and VPD series. Um, let's see. This pro program is used to design and implement the design of the HMI, as well as create the ladder uh, for the HMI and uh, the I/O attached to it. Today, I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of how to create a, a few tags and show you the logic operation within HMI Works for ladder program. Uh, the first thing you must do is open up the software and choose your touchpad type. For this uh, example, I'll use TPD 433, which has an Ethernet port, so we can create a Modbus TCP connection. Let's just call it demo 2015-0828. Uh, then next, you must choose your orientation of the touchpad. You can do portrait, landscape, portrait flip, or landscape flip. Uh, the viewing angle is oftentimes best from certain angles depending on how you mount it. So you can choose the orientation based on that. For this example, I'll do landscape view. And uh, since this webinar is on ladder programming, we'll select the default programming type as ladder. Each screen within HMI Works can only have one type of programming type. But uh, when you change frames, a second frame can have a different uh, programming type. OK, so I've created a project. This is my workspace here. This is what will appear on the screen for the touchpad itself. Uh, let's see, this is our workspace and toolbox uh, tabs that Maria mentioned. Over here is our inspector and library tabs. And down here is the results section. OK, let's see. The first thing we must do is create a few connections to devices and a few tags so that we can implement the logic. So for instance, this one, let's just create a Modbus TCP connection. So we'll create a Modbus TCP connection from the touchpad itself. Let's see. And then we'll create a device with some tags. Like new device. For this one, the touchpad will be a Modbus master, so this is the role of the touchpad. I'm going to assume that we have a third party Modbus device and just do user defined at the bottom. Uh, you click on edit, 
to assign the number of each type of tag. Let's just put uh, five of each. And let's see, then we press OK. And now we have five digital outputs, five digital inputs, five analog inputs, and five analog output channels to use in our log, uh, logic. Uh, next, let's also create some virtual channels. Our virtual channels are virtual tags or additional memory tags. You just simply click on virtual and then right click on a uh, new virtual tag. And we'll just name it as sum. And we'll just go OK. And we'll see a tag there. <clears throat> if we expand this box, we can expand our device and also see our tags. OK. Well, let's see. Then next we'd want to put, I guess, a background picture here. So let's just go over here. Well, actually, let me explain the widgets and stuff for the toolbox. OK. Within the toolbox, here are our drawing tools, our widgets, and our system objects. Um, this, the arrow object is just for selecting things. So for instance, I'll create a rectangle. And after I click off of it, I want to click on the arrow to select and edit it. And over here in the inspector window are the properties for the object which you have selected or which you've just created. And you can adjust uh, things like the color, the height, uh, the placement of the object. Uh, let's see, we have ellipses, a text box. This is like, for instance, if you want to just create a box with text in it. A uh, picture, this is a, uh, what do you call it, a widget where you can d display pictures within the object. This is mostly used in C programming. Uh, the line widget for simply drawing lines. Then the more exciting ones, uh, the text push button. This is just a simple button that uh, we can draw on the screen. Uh, that whatever text you type here will appear, let's say, on. What happened? Text. Then we do on. What am I doing? Hmm. OK, well, let's see. The text would appear in the box right here. Uh, there we have sliders for displaying values such as temperature and for adjusting values. We have the bit button. The hotspot, which uh, is oftentimes used in conjunction with just a static picture or static image that has a nice graphical picture of a button, but when you touch the area that's uh, covered within the hotspot, it will act as if it's a button and perform an action. Uh, the checkbox widget, we could use that in a little bit to work in conjunction with the object list to create multiple images from within uh, a button, I guess, for instance. A label widget, this is used for numerically displaying a value of, say, an analog input or analog output. So whatever size you draw here, and then whatever tag you associate with it over here on the inspector will display the numerical value. And you do have the option to do uh, just the decimal point for scaling. And you can also do internal scaling using uh, your ladder logic or C programming. A radio button is a radio button where you can select one of many different choices and associate them with a tag condition. Next we have our system widgets, which are the timer, which is mostly used for C programming. This is where you usually would embed, let's see, let's create another screen. Where do we go? Here we go, a new frame. <coughs> let's do C this time. So frame two would appear here. Since I do have this in C, I should be able to double click. This is where you would embed your uh, C coding normally if you do C programming. <laughs> and over here within the properties of the timer is interval. So this is a millisecond. So every 1,000 milliseconds or every one second, it will execute all the logic that you place within this timer widget. And you can adjust the period of the timer, plus you can have multiple timers at the same time. OK, the paint box is also mainly used in C programming. That's used for drawing images within a box. And the object list, which is oftentimes used with a checkbox widget for uh, displaying multiple cases. Let me just create one and show you, actually. So for instance, uh, we have a couple of objects already in the library. We have many different library libraries available. Plus, you can import your own images and uh, objects. Okay, so let's see. So say, for instance, I wanted up arrow and a blue 
down arrow, or I guess down arrow rather. So you click that, and then let's see, we'll create a checkbox widget here. We'll associate with object list number 10. Let's see, where is our reference object? Object list 10. So notice the uh, box appears, or the arrow appears here. And then let's see, over here, is next to the objects that we selected, there's a 0 and a 1. That is the logic condition at which it will show those dis those objects. So for instance, when it's a zero condition, it'll show this object right here. And when it's a one condition, it'll show this. You can also create, uh, you know, uh, more than just uh, Boolean logic. You can do zero, one, two, three, you know, up to, I forget the number, but it's quite, quite a bit. I'd say it's at least 20 um, different objects associated with a variable. So for instance, if you just had an integer variable, you can have a zero condition, a one condition, you know, up to say 20, and display 20 different pictures within that window if you needed to. Okay, um, next let's go to the section that we want to create the logic. So from the logic section, we go here to the ladder programming. This is the ladder designer. This is where you uh, implement your ladder. Uh, let's see, for instance, we have contacts, we have coils, and we have function blocks. The difference between F2 and F3 is uh, this will put a coil, or I'm sorry, a contact, to the left of where the cursor is currently, and this place a contact to the right of where the cursor currently is. This would place it in parallel. So you can implement your AND and OR logic. Um, let's see, for the coils, uh, let's see, the, you press F5 and it would appear to the right of where you are. And the function block's the same pretty much as what I just said. So if you want a function block to the left of where you are, where the cursor is, you press the F6. And if you want it to the right, you press the F7. And if you want it in parallel, you press the F8 key. So let's just create some logic. Let's see, let's just say that uh, digital input 0. Uh, triggers, well, let's delete this first. Let's see, and just triggers digital output zero to turn on. Simple enough. So the light switch will turn on the light. Uh, next, let's create a second rung. Let's implement some, uh, let's see, and logic. And we just create and, so digital input one and digital input Oops, digital input 0 and digital input 1 need to turn on or be on in order to turn on digital output 0 in this case. If you wanted to create some OR logic, you create like this, and then you could do this. And for this rung, it's digital input 0 or oops, digital input 1 will turn on digital output zero. Okay, so these are uh, basic straightforward logic, uh, and operation, or operation. Now let's use a function block. Let's say we want to create a function block. By double clicking on the top of the function block, you can get to the different categories of the function block. Our default ones have and and or operation, exclusive or, equal and not equal conditions less than or equal, greater than or equal, uh, the ability to assign a variable. I use this quite often for uh, assigning a number to a certain value based on a logic condition. It uh, works actually great with the uh, object list. So you can, for instance, say if digital input 1 is true, then you want to assign a value of 1. If digital input 2 is false, then you assign a different value, and if digital input 3 uh, affects the case of the object, you can assign a variable value of 3. You can do on change condition, in range, and out of range. So for instance, if you wanted to be between, say, 50 and 60 percent to turn something on, you could use the in range. And if you were outside that range, uh, you can do a different action by using the outer range function block. Uh, within our math function blocks, we have uh, simple math and 
or I'm sorry, add, subtract, multiply, divide, increment, decrement, the modulus, which is used for the remainder, uh, scaling function blocks, and invert 0 and 1, which is used for Boolean logic. Uh, the for convert, we have uh, some add-in uh, function blocks for K-type thermocouples, and we have a C2F degrees, which is used for converting uh, Celsius degrees to Fahrenheit without having to do the math yourself. So the object, let's see, say for instance you have your tag associated with uh, Celsius degrees, then use a virtual tag associated with Fahrenheit and use the Fahrenheit tag to display your actual value. So it does a conversion. There's just a simple math operation uh, in the function block. And by the way, behind each function block is actually C coding. Uh, if you look in the manual, there are uh, demonstrations on how to create your own function blocks. So by no means are you limited to the function blocks shown here. You can create your own and add them to the library for future use and uh, within your project. And we have a few extras that we can help you create too. Oops. For the counter, we have simple count up, count down. For the timer, a timer event, uh, basically uh, turn the timer on, turn the timer off, or uh, create a period where an event happens after the timer runs out. Uh, within our system uh, function blocks, we have the ability to beep, uh, touch beep, uh, get date, set date, adjust the backlight for the brightness of the screen. Say, for instance, when you when someone touches a certain area, they want to increase the brightness of a screen, and after a timer uh, times out, you maybe want to have it go more dim to save the backlight for you know longevity purposes. A user defined. Uh, let's see in here. I currently have a go to frame, a current frame. Uh, let's see. Set timeout, timeout to action. Uh, some uh, number format conversion. Uh, word to float, float to word, word to double word, double word to two words. <clears throat> uh, within our VPD series, there's some uh, tactile buttons at the bottom of some of them, and you can use these function blocks to get the get the status of the keys and to show the status of the keys as well. Uh, for our IR210, we have an assigned feature. Okay, so let's see, depending on what function you want to implement, let's just say we want to do a simple math function. So we'll create a new rung here with the function block. Double click. Let's just do the math. So we want to add the value of, say, a temperature, or actually, I guess, a count associated with analog input to a second count for a second analog input. Let's use this. And we'll put the result into a virtual tag right here called sum. And this uh, ladder uh, function will be implemented in the order that it appears. And then let's see, we also have the jump feature and the ability to add comments. So if, say, for instance, you wanted to say uh, sum of input 0 and input 1 stored in some variable. Okay, it would appear down there just below wherever your cursor currently is. Uh, once you've created your logic, you just simply click on File, Save and Close. Oops, I have an undefined function block that's shown right here. I'll enter it again, and we'll just put some variables here. Let's just choose a couple of tags. Global analog input. And we'll just use the analog output value here for now. And we'll do file, save, and close. <coughs> now, when you run your project and transfer it to the touchpad, your logic will be uh, associated with the tags created in the device and the variable tags. And you can uh, draw a nice picture here. Say, for instance, I want to put a nice background here. Let's just go to our library, and we have some background images. Where do they go? Background here. Uh, whatever background you choose over here will be here. 
we just simply drag it and since we don't want to hide the arrow we'll send this to the back and you can see the arrow there. Uh, once you've created your project and you're happy with what you see on your screen or screens then you can do file, uh, build and render to see if you have any errors. It will convert the file to a HXP file and you can use Let's see this right here, uh, Control F9 or click download only to download to your touchpad. Um, does anyone have any questions? If you have questions, please type in the chat box and we'll be happy to go over whatever questions you have. Okay, um, is there a high speed counter? Uh, the high speed counter would be associated with the module itself. Um, let's see, or actually, in most cases, the actual input device would have the counter built in and we just use tags to read the value. If you needed to implement, say, ladder logic faster, you can't really do that, but it would give you the sum at that moment. Say, for instance, you're adding two tags that move very fast. It'll continuously implement that sum and add the values, but it won't be, I guess, per se, real time because there will be the delay uh, for the time that it takes to do the math. Okay, and then um, like for as far as hardware goes, for analog we have some that can sample 60 samples per second, others can sample 10 samples per second, and then for digital, do you know the, the speed limitations, Robert? Um, let's see, it's very fast actually. It's like, uh, I forget, it's like 100 megahertz for some of them, so you can, uh, you know, read digital input values very fast. It's just a matter of the touchpad then reading those values from the uh, remote I.O. modules and doing the calculation. Um, and we have specific encoder modules which can also count really fast too because if you can imagine an encoder attached to something with high resolution <clears throat> also has counters built in. Here's another question from Henry. Um, Henry had said, how do you place a button on the panel and then link it to a ladder logic input? Uh, so just really quick oh. before we answer that, um, I was just showing the answer to one of the polls, about 50-50 um, of everyone that answered have used ladder logic. Um, so Robert, if you want to show um, how to okay, put the button sure. on. Okay, let me just delete some of these objects so I have a clean. Oops, wait, wait. Okay, so let's see, just simply creating a button, you go to your toolbox, let's just assume we want to do a bit button, so we have the bit button right there, next we associate the tag which will show the 0 or 1 condition, which would be in this case a digital input of a DIO 0. Let's see, if you wanted to use, say, the ladder logic, you would do the DO right here, DO 0, which is the result of that. So you just, instead of having it be, be associated with DIO or DI0, we make it associated with DO0. Does that answer your question, Henry? And you can also use a virtual tag there for uh, the logic as well. If, for instance, you wanted to do a true AND or OR condition, you wouldn't associate it with a you know, sometimes you'd want to associate with, I guess, a virtual tag. Okay, so Henry said yes, thank you. And okay. here's another one of the polls I had asked, what kind of PLCs have you used? About 15% use ICP DAS, 23% use Allen Bradley, and 62% use other. And so I guess of those that use other, if you could type them into the chat box, that would be interesting to know. I would assume a great number of them are now using Modbus TCP, Modbus RTU, or Ethernet IP. The touchpad is uh, able to communicate to Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU devices currently. So those PLCs do have uh, the ability to be either Modbus Master or Modbus Slave. You can use the touchpad in conjunction with those by connecting to the Ethernet port or the uh, serial port. 
and using the touchpad as either a Modbus master or Modbus slave, whether it be R2 or TCP. And you can use it as an interface to display values, change values, manipulate values, create logic associated with uh, certain tags. And so um, for some feedback for those that typed out, that selected other, some have typed Modbus and Keyence PLCs, also Keithly. I never heard of that one actually. Uh, but there's many different brands of PLCs. There's, there's even one called Splat that I've heard of. Okay, well, um, thank you so much for attending our training. Uh, we will be happy to help you with any applications you're working on. Um, oh, they, they meant Keyence and not Keith Lee. Oh, okay. Um, so we will be happy to help you with any projects or applications. And for small projects, we can help you with programming services for very small applications. Like Robert showed you, we can make the program for you and, and send you the touchpad with the actual program in there. If you give us, for example, the Modbus registers and your device information, then and we could have a quick conversation and then we can make the little program for you. Or if you sent us a graphic, for example, for what you want the screen to look like, we could use overlay hotspot buttons where you can push the button and then your operation can happen. Oh, Todd has a question. Can you give him a sample, an example of a subroutine? A subroutine using the jump feature, is that right? Maybe just you could even just show some demo programs and show the code. Or yeah, or oh. make change it now. See, what we do is a jump he said um he said no, just in ladder logic. He just wants an example of the subroutine. Well, I mean within ladder ladder logic, uh, the logic just keeps continuously going back and forth, starting from bottom to, or I'm sorry, top to bottom. So there's no true subroutine. Uh, when you get into subroutines, you uh, stand the chance of getting into loops. You can use the jump command to re-implement certain parts of the logic, and then you can use the second jump command to jump out of it based on another condition. But traditionally, the ladder goes from top to bottom, and it's just a continuous loop. OK, and then that answer your question. He said, OK. And then Randy asked if we have a more detailed class available, and if so, when and where. So we'll hold a more detailed class next week, and I'll send everyone an invite. OK, and if anyone wants to go over this one-on-one, -on -one, we can certainly do that. Um, we have uh, this GoToMeeting software, or we can use TeamViewer where you can see my screen or I can see yours. Uh, for this webinar, we just want to keep it about 20 to 30 minutes, usually. OK, so I'll send everyone an invite to a more detailed training, and we'll go into more details. And uh, thank everyone. specific uh, operations that you want to go over in like the detailed class, please let us know. We can definitely include them, and you know, it may help you develop your project faster. Yeah, maybe just reply to the newsletter and um, tell us what you want to in the training, and then we'll, we'll make sure that's in there. OK, thanks again for attending, and hope to see you next week. Thank you. OK, take care, all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.